Welcome to Week in Geek, your new comics preview for October 16th. I'm Mike Ortiz. And I'm the Chris Brown. What a relief it is to not be solo. <laughs> that was awful. Awful last week. I did the best I could, though. Everyone was very sympathetic, so I appreciate that. I'm back. Thank you. Yes, it's good to have uh, Mr. Ortiz back with me here. <laughs> that was that was rough. Oh, man. So, uh, what do you got? I'm going to lead off here with a book that looks like a lot of fun. This is I'm sort of all over the map this week yeah. in terms of publishers. I've got all kinds of stuff. I'm looking at Imagine Agents number one of four by Boom Studios. Boom Studios has got a bunch of stuff coming out. They mm-hmm. announced all. They've got a, a bunch of interesting things. They're kind of yeah. the, a lot of these publishers are now trying to seize that indie market that people mm-hmm. are really enjoying. Boom it, and, and Dynamite both are kind of like trying to step up and be a uh, yes. new image, dark horse, something like that. And even IDW, who kind of came out of nowhere, yeah. and so I think uh, Dynamite's feeling like they wanted to be in that group. Yeah. And and again, same thing with Boom here. Now this looks like this is a sort of a Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends meets some sort of spy book. This is, you know, the Imagine Agents, they've got kids who have created these, you know, imaginary friends. There looks like there's a big teddy bear and there's a dinosaur with antlers and a cowboy hat. I, I don't know, it looks really strange, but it looks fun. This is by, do I even know any of the people who did this? Brian Joins and uh, illustrated by Bacan. I have no clue, but it looks fun. I really like the artwork. Colors look great, and it looks really kind of like fun. That's, that's, a, that's a big thing for me. I really enjoy something that you can have a good time with, and that looks like uh, like it. Next, I've got The Hunger, issue number four. This is part of that Age of Ultron aftermath. This is the broken timeline. Galactus ends up over in the Ultimate yeah. Universe, and I do believe this is how they're going to bring it all to, to our universe to some degree. Galactus has sort of teamed up with the the swarm that is Galactus in the Ultimate Universe, mm-hmm. and they're, they're wreaking all kinds of havoc. Uh, this has been a pretty cool book. I uh, have not read issue three yet. It was epically late. I yeah. read those first two, which I really liked, so now I'm going to have to read the three and the four together. But I have liked this. It's a it's a Galactus story. Yeah. I like Galactus. You know, everyone's so fired up lately about Thanos, we've kind of almost, uh, you know, forgotten about uh-huh. uh, the big planet eater, who, who we yeah. all uh, all love so much. Good that, uh, that he's getting, uh, getting to eat a little bit. A- absolutely. In a somewhat more expendable universe. Well, yeah, he gets to go to a different restaurant. Yeah. So that's kind of nice. He gets to check out, you know, the delicacies and other places, and that's good for him. Good, yeah. Good good going, Galactus. So uh, next up, I've got Uncanny X-Men, uh, number 13. This is chapter 8 of Battle of the Atom. This has been a great series. I thought the last issue was, you know, okay. I mean, it was a big fight scene. It was the we, the kind of the reveal of who the futuristic X-Men were. And, you know, they seem to be some sort of renegades, and they have some sort of ulterior motive that doesn't seem to be positive by the fact that, Someone who called Wolverine dad, is that the son of him and Mystique? Is that what it was, a shapeshift? I don't know what happened, but... There's a, a blue-skinned guy with claws on the cover. And he stabs Wolverine in the yeah. in the belly, and some things happen. It, like I said, big big fight scene, essentially. I really want to know what... what what Why are they here? What's going yeah. on? What are, the, what are the future X-Men, the actual right. X-Men, going to do? And what's going on with these guys? Bendis is crafting a really fun story. I yeah. mean, everyone else is doing well with their their chapters, and some guys better than others. Fun thing, I, it's a X Men crossover that I'm enjoying a lot more than I have in a long time. Mm-hmm. Let's just uh, hope that uh, we, we've got a lot of balls in the air. Let's hope yes. that uh, that the the payoff actually makes sense and, and they, that they stick it. That we get some kind of a payoff. Yeah. That'd be nice too. That usually doesn't happen with uh, so many. Well, so the many payoff is read the next miniseries. <laughs> Next up, I've got Buzzkill. This is a Dark Horse comic. It's issue number two of four. This is about a superhero who only gets his powers when he's oh, drunk yeah. or high. And so, kind of, kind of strange. Uh, the, the artwork looks great. He, he was going to some kind of, uh, I believe, like an AA meeting. He, you know, he doesn't like the fact that he doesn't remember what happens next when he does these things. And it, it was kind of an interesting, interesting take. I mean, it seems like there's a lot of books like that lately where... Uh, intoxicated superheroes there's the bounce with the the stoner guy the, okay. the, the image book and this thing but I, I i like it it's interesting um it's only i think a four issue miniseries so i gotta check that out next up i've got letter 44 this is i'll tell you why i'm reading this charles soul and Raphael albuquerque i don't even remember what it's about um was it something uh yeah i don't even can't, well, can't even tell real quick here but oh is it a different albuquerque that's not Raphael. oh it's alberto well, that's all right. He gets the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> yeah, because that's not Raphael Albuquerque's artwork. But it still looks great. Looks pretty good. It's uh, a sci-fi series. It's sci-fi, it's something with U.S. and space. and Yeah. Should be cool. I mean, definitely science fiction. I mean, you know, 
the, the idea of the U.S. in space and landing on the moon. Mm -hmm. Can't think more fictional than that. <laughs> Next up, I've got Exo Man of War. This is issue number 18 by Valiant Comics. Exo has been a, a great title. I think this has been been pretty solid from the from the get go. They did a nice job of setting up the barbarian on Earth, and then he, you know, kind of goes back up to the the alien planet. He discovers that the descendants of his people are still, you know, alive and well, and he frees them. And now we're it looks like we're building up to something else, the next thing, and I'm sure we're building up to Unity. That's going to be the big storyline. I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, you know, Valiant's doing a really big push on that, and they seem to be pretty proud of it and pretty excited. And hopefully that'll be. Uh, Hopefully we'll go back to that word payoff. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll get something cool there, and I'm excited about it. Then I've got my uh, my image stack here. I've got Thief of Thieves. This is issue number 17. This is, uh, I believe this is uh, Andy Diggle doing this one here. So, yeah, we're, we're a couple of issues into this story arc, I believe. And I believe I'm a little bit behind on this one, too. But I like it. It's a... It's a you know, it's a heist book. Mm -hmm. And I like the idea that it's not exactly what it looks like. You know, our, our, our crook is kind of almost... Uh, godfathered it up here where it's kind of like he's trying to get out but they keep pulling him back in he's trying to get his son out of trouble there's you know kind of the backstory where there's an agent that's trying to take him down but he's just trying to make things right and get out and not be bothered really good characterization some good characters i really enjoy this book and i'm hoping they can get that tv series together at some point yeah pretty much. Now, here's a book. Uh, I'm still here after issue four. I think uh, the artwork is, is pretty solid. I enjoy this book. This is, uh, or I enjoy things about this book. Mm -hmm. This is Sheltered, issue number four, a pre-apocalyptic tale. This is the one where I was kind of bummed out about kids killing kids. And I was like, oh, man. But it seems like it, it's, it's beyond that. There are some other things going on. There, it seems that there's some sort of a backstory and perhaps even motive. It's not exactly what they're telling us. And, yeah, we're getting a little Lord of the Flies, the kids turning on each other and trying to understand what happened. There's older kids and middle kids and younger kids. and it, I am kind of enjoying the storytelling, even though, like I said, the whole idea of kids killing kids isn't... The premise itself doesn't really appeal to me, mm -hmm. but the storytelling has been pretty strong and the artwork, I think, is pretty solid. And that is the, a great, great cover there. It looks really gruesome and <laughs> brutal there, but... That is the bulk of my stack. What are you What are you looking at? I'm starting off with Invincible, number 106. I mean, this looks like we're at a bit of an interlude here. Yes. Uh, you know, we're kind of, uh, we got a nice big uh, intro, uh, action-packed intro, and then it's kind of uh, just some, some side stuff, some of the family stuff we've got on the cover. Uh, Mark and his daddy arm wrestling. Uh, they, they're up there on the moon with their ladies having a, having a nice time, but uh, we also get a little bit more about uh, what's going on with, uh, what's his name, that old Regent? Okay. Uh, Regent Thrag. Uh, you know, he was let go because the uh, Mark's dad, who is the new Omni-Man, who is the new Regent, uh, wants to forge a new way for the Viltrumite people. Uh, well, he's the descendant of their, right. you know, their royalty. Uh, but not everybody is happy that, uh, that he let basically a genocidal madman go off on his way. A, a genocidal madman with the powers of Superman go off on his way. So, uh, yeah, that's going to that's gonna come back to haunt him, I'm sure. As these things do. Next up, Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, we pretty much finally got the full uh, Angela in the last issue. Uh, in this issue, uh, I'm presuming that we're going to get a little bit more of exactly who she is. Uh, okay, we get, we, we're going to get her backstory to some extent here. Cool. So uh, now we're going to find out uh, how she fits into the Marvel Universe. Wouldn't that be fun if they actually tie her backstory to uh, Miracle Man now that, that they're bringing Marvel that Man would over? Because be kind of, uh, that be really kind of is her backstory right now. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, that would be kind of neat if it was if they found a way to really kind of incorporate the sort of meta story of, uh, of Miracle Man and the Neil Gaiman battle with Todd McFarlane. Uh, I don't know how, but uh, I guess uh, I'd be I guess amused by it. it. Um, so, uh, yeah, but this is also continuing basically Marvel's uh, spacefaring Avengers. Iron Man is still uh, with the group at this time. Uh, and we've got uh, the Rocket Raccoon, and everyone's getting excited for uh, the movie coming up. So we're really just kind of like, I mean, this was this was pretty much the big thing coming out of Age of Ultron. Yeah. Was her, uh, her joining the team. Uh, what that means in the long run, I guess we'll find out. Uh, next up, we got Fantastic Four. Uh, Matt Fraction and uh, Carl Kiesel. Uh, they're coming to their uh, end of their storyline. I guess the book's going to be canceled and relaunched with the new creative team. I don't think they've announced a new creative team. They it's have been, announced been, a creative it, team. They've announced a writer. 
Really? They're... James Robinson. Now, is that confirmed or is that still the bleeding cool rumor? I believe it was confirmed out of NYCC. Okay, cool. So, uh, so yeah, we're going to get a new direction, uh, a different take. I wonder if this is going to be a, a common thing when they switch up. Are they going to just keep restarting the books? Uh, we're only on issue 13. I think we're making it to 15. They'll go back when they hit 700. <laughs> but uh, Are they, they going to include the FF numbers? Uh, and I'm sure they will. They point, did last time. It depends, oh, on, it depends on, on where the anniversary issue is going to fall in their storyline. Uh, but it looks like we got some Doctor Doom in here. We've got some Kang. We've got some Annihilus. Uh, some, hmm, some other uh, interesting future stuff uh, with the uh, Johnny Storm that's been appearing. And, ooh, some nasty stuff going on with the thing. You. Uh, so, yeah. Well, we knew that was going on, they, going uh, to happen there. They, uh, yeah, their powers, uh, they're, or they're still deteriorating. Their powers are uh, are causing them to, to kind of break up a little bit. Uh, it's it's an attack by one of their villains, so I don't think they've revealed who yet. So, yeah, they're uh, they're moving towards their big conclusion with uh, with Matt Fraction's take on the character, and then we'll get uh, James Robinson. And, uh, and an, an, as yet, unnamed artist, I heard... Jeff Parker, not Jeff Parker. Yeah, he's right uh, Leonard right. Kirk was uh, he done? was kicked around there. He did Supergirl. He's done a lot of stuff for DC. Okay. He did uh, Agents of Atlas, I think. Okay. Um, so I heard that name kicked around. Very good artist. Uh, he's the artist on the book. Uh, he fits a very classic style like the FF. Next up, Superior Spider-Man number nineteen. Uh, this is continuing the Spider-Man twenty ninety nine storyline. Uh, Spider-Man twenty ninety nine has come back. Uh, to the present because something was making his future uh, disintegrate, something that happened uh, in our time. Uh, and now there's a lot of time traveling going on, which was supposed to be a no-no, but no one's still stopping. Uh, how it all ties in, I guess we'll find out. Uh, you know, obviously the, the present day is going to continue. Uh, who knows, maybe Spider-Man 2099 will be trapped here in the present along with Miles Morales, and we'll get a whole like it. team of Spider-Man sometime in the future. None of which would be Peter Parker. But, uh, yeah, we're continuing the Dr. Octopus uh, stuff, although uh, people have uh, figured out... Oh, it looks like uh, some people are starting to figure out what's going on. Uh, and I, I think there was some talk at New York Comic Con that uh, that they're moving towards the conclusion that they've had planned for a while. Moving towards the conclusion they've had planned a while, and then they said Peter Parker will be back in flashback stories. Ah. So I don't know how they're going to do it. I, you know, I, I obviously we're not being the told, told the entire truth. No, I mean, we're supposed to wait and read it. You know, we'll I just want to know when I can start reading Spider-Man again. <laughs> I'm sure they'll let you know. Uh, next up, I've got uh, a vet, new Avengers. What number is this? Number eleven, and uh, and also just kind of tying in, we've got Avengers number twenty-one. These are both Infinity tie-ins. Uh, they have the green cover. So they tie into the latest issue of Infinity. I overall, I'm I'm a little behind on a lot of my books, especially the stuff from last week because I was on vacation. I did read Infinity; it was quite good, and I believe these happen after that. Hopefully, number four. Yep. So, uh, so yeah, this is continuing what was going on in Infinity. We've got Thanos uh, looking for his son. His son's powers have been triggered, uh, mm -hmm. and now he uh, he has the power to bring death, apparently, which is pretty good power. Uh, in the meantime, the Avengers are taking on the uh, the Builders. Uh, they've had uh, a couple of, of good choice victories. They've shown that the Builders can die. Uh, Thor killed one of them, and then Captain America said, okay, now it's time to win. Because that's what Captain America does. Absolutely. So uh, in these two books, uh, they're going to start winning. And uh, it looks like we've got uh, Lionel Francis Yu on the artwork here, Mike Diodato on the artwork in, uh, in New Avengers. Uh, this one, it looks like we've got a little bit of the Captain uh, Universe stuff going on. But it's definitely just a lot of, of Avengers fighting. So, yeah, we're coming towards the end. There's two issues left of Infinity. Okay. So uh, we're in that final act where uh, they're going to just sort of beat the crap out of everything. And, and then we'll see what happens with this Thanos stuff, which I thought Thanos was really going to be the main big bad. But I thought so, too. He's uh, basically doing his own thing behind the scenes and uh, kind of kind of two stories going on. Something will spin out of that, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Well, we've got that... We've that, got the next big event. Yeah, that Inhumanity thing coming, which that's, yeah. that was the thing is they triggered all of the latent Inhumans all over the world, which is okay. kind of... Didn't they do that in Earth-X years ago? And, uh, and now it's kind of like we're finally getting mutants back, and now we've got more Inhumans. There aren't going to be any people left on Earth when this is done. Uh, anyway, uh, we've got uh, Justice League of America number eight. Uh, this is a Forever Evil 
tie-in. Uh, this is Matt Kent okay. as the writer with uh, Doug Mankey as the artist. I love Doug Mankey's art. Great, uh, great stuff on Green Lantern. Uh, and now he's taking over this book. The Justice League have been beaten. The evil Justice League uh, are basically running rampant on Earth. It looks like we're going to see a little bit more of what happened to uh, to the Justice League. We got Martian Man under here. We got Wonder Woman here. We got Cap or Shazam. He's not Captain Marvel anymore. Uh, some Flash. So yeah, we're going to hopefully finally find out exactly what happened to the Justice League, and uh, and we'll see. Uh, Matt Kent's kind of all over the place. He is. He's been DC doing a lot of work today. So uh, so good for him. Let's see uh, how his first issue. And this, that's going to come to an end and become Justice League Canada. Justice or something, League Canada. Right? Yeah. Because uh, I believe Matt Kent is Canadian. Not okay. Sure. Could be. Could be. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, next up, we've got Batman sixty six. Uh, this is the uh, the continuity of the old TV show. Yep. Uh, this was a, a DC digital first that they uh, then publish uh, in print form. Uh, two stories per comic. Yep. Our first story uh, has got the Mad Hatter. This is the first time, I believe, the first time they've used one of the TV only villains. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, not this. The Mad Hatter was a. That's not the Mad Hatter. Is that the Mad Hatter? I believe that is Mad Hatter, isn't it? Is that, that's kind of what he looked like in the is, show. But is that we also was, use Egghead? Did they the use comic? Egghead? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's right. I think he was in the last one. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we well, got a kind of a, a British Batmobile. Interesting. So, yeah, this is just a lot of fun. Uh, two stories per issue. There's nothing ongoing. Uh, just like the old TV show. Uh, just a lot of fun, bright, colorful, silly Batman stuff. Uh, if you're tired of the dark and brooding, grim and gritty heroes that are pretty much everywhere else... Uh, you're not, you're not going to find uh, much more fun than this. Uh, with some, I got Jeff Parker, I think, is doing yes. a lot, most of the writing here. So good stuff. If you're a fan of the TV show. Art's really fun. Yes, definitely. If you're a fan of the TV show, as many people are, uh, you're certainly going to want to check that out. Uh, if you're not a fan of the TV show, uh, go check it out because it's actually good stuff. It, it is really fun. Well, I guess that brings me to the top of my stack here. This is a book I feel like we've been waiting for for, for months. This has been yeah. really, really late, and that's Very why late. it found its way to the top of my stack. Just because wow. it's been so late, and we've been so eager for it. This is Hawkeye number 13. This I can't is, remember what's going on in this book. Me neither. I'm hoping we're at the, you know, maybe the beginning of something here. This, I mean, these are mostly, like, kind of one-offs yeah. anyway. You can read an issue, and sure, they're building a larger story with some of their characters, but a really fun book. I've got to go back. There's the dog. You know, we had the dog perspective dog. Uh, book uh, in the previous issue. Yeah. Um, cool book. Looks like we got some Avengers in here. We got Spider Woman and, and Black Widow. So that's, that's uh, the first time we've actually seen a costume in this book. Yes, I think. yes. Aside from you know the, the barely costume that he wears, you know yeah. his purple chucks and his you know his, his his purple shirt. I mean it's essentially a street level costume. But uh, cool book. I'm really looking forward to to getting back on track with Hawkeye. I think it's been a, a lot of fun and. You know, them moving Fraction around. I hope he sticks on this book. I'd, I'd hate for this so. to go the way of, of Iron Fist. Yeah. From what I understand, uh, he's he's dedicated to, to getting this book out. That's why he's leaving uh, Fantastic Four and FF. Okay. And, uh, so he can focus. And doing uh, Inhumanity, or the Inhumans book, and uh, Silver Surfer. Which, uh, actually, yeah, our Mike Allred. No, it's Fraction's not, not doing no, Silver Dan Surfer. Dan Slott Slott is doing, yeah. yeah with Mike Allred. From, yeah, I don't know what else he's doing other than the Inhuman stuff. Well, he's got actually a bunch of creator-owned stuff coming. That's true. Yes. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, he's got the, what sex criminals, sex and... criminals, and satellite Sam. Uh, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, Green Lantern New Guardians number twenty four. This is part three of the Lights Out crossover. Uh, I've really been enjoying this crossover. I really have been huh. enjoying uh, the new creative teams on the Green Lantern books. They've uh, doing a good job. They, they're doing a nice job. This is probably my favorite of the books. Okay. Um, they have uh, big shoes to fill, too, coming yeah. after that long run of Definitely. Jeff Johns. Uh, Brad Walker's doing a great job on artwork. Justin Jordan uh, is, is, is a really solid writer. This is the, the story of, of Kyle Rayner overall, but, you know, in this we're okay. going to get everybody. So we've got Hal, we've got John, we've got uh, the Star Sapphires and all that. Uh, it looks like we're touching on what's, what happened to the Entities. Uh, right. As you remember in the storyline, the, the Entities are dying somehow. And, uh, and we have to figure out why. It's tied in probably to what's going on with Relic and, and the Lightsmiths. And Relic is here to our, at our universe to basically destroy all of the Lanterns before they uh, destroy the universe the way they did uh, in his universe. Uh, so really been a lot of fun. Uh, some great big cosmic stuff, but uh, we we're seeing some, some new things. And I'm glad these guys, instead of just trotting out the Sinestro Corps again or just sort of reusing the same 
stuff that uh, Jeff Johns did. They're they're creating their own new villain, their own new cool. conflict, uh, some new ideas. Uh, the idea that the uh, all the different power batteries pull from a finite reservoir that when it's all used up, the universe comes to an end. Okay. Interesting stuff. Uh, it, it's kind of a strange pseudo-environmental message almost, uh, which is strangely appropriate for a Green Lantern book. Uh, so yeah, it's been a lot of fun so far. These guys, uh, this, fortunately, this crossover is uh, is going through uh, just the Green Lantern books. I don't think there's any kind of bookends okay. or anything like that. I think the annual is where it ends. Uh, but overall, I've really been enjoying this crossover. I've been enjoying the new teams and their new take on the books. Good stuff. Right on. Well, I guess uh, that brings us to a close. I do want to mention, mention something really quickly here. Mm-hmm. I had uh, there were there were some messages going around Fast and Furious on uh, Facebook last week. I got a little jealous because uh, Riley let a, a couple of uh, his, his fellow creators, mm-hmm. um, our friend Mike Morisi being one of yeah. them, read Drumheller number one. I got a little jealous. I expressed yeah. I, was, I was a little jealous on Mike's page. I was like, oh man, jealous. And uh, Riley sends me a message and asks me if I want to read it. Mm-hmm. I don't even know how that's a question. Clearly, I want to read it. And I have. No, I can't, the, the, the funny thing is, I can't tell you anything about it. Nope. All I can tell you is, this is the best I've ever seen Riley's art look. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely fantastic. It's a really, really fun book. I think I think he's setting the stage for something really, really cool. I, you know, all I will say is it reminds me of all the things I did to myself in college that I just can't do anymore. So uh, it's got a really trippy vibe to it. Great book. That's going to be out in November. And uh, with that, I'll just leave you with a little little tease. And that's all yeah. you get. You just get teased that it's great and you can't read it yet. You'll get more when the book comes out. In November. And it'll yeah. be it'll be awesome. So uh, that is your Week in Geek. 